But I want to ask, because since you, you raised the question of have you seen any crisis and so on, many, I've spoken to some of your fellow contestants. Yes. I've spoken to Alhaji Suli Lamido, I've spoken to Alhaji uh, Tahiru Bafarawa, mm. and of course Alhaji Ahmed Makarfi. Yes. And I put this question to them. I said, is there not another crisis in the waiting from this scenario? Mm. One, there are a number of you who remained in the party, yes. even during the crisis, yes. who have made clear their ambitions to be president. Yes. There are a number of the people who are returning that yes. you referred to, yes. who are returning, and the, of course the reports are that they are returning mm. in order to get this same ticket. Yes. For example, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, in fact, has declared his intention yes. to contest yes. for the president. Is there not another crisis in the making, considering that all these people, including yourself, are heavyweights in the Nigerian political scene, and that at the end of the primary season, if someone emerges, it is highly unlikely that the others mm. will accept that, okay, fine, one person must emerge, let us all suspect, uh, uh, support this person. Will we not return to a situation of crisis? I don't think so. You see, politics is not absence of interest. Every politics, whether local, national, or international, is about interest. And that is where interest is what remains constant as far as politics is concerned. When you talk about leaders like Waziri of Adama Atiku Abubakar, he was there at the beginning and formation of PDP. He had made invaluable contribution to the growth of PDP. If you talk about Senator Rabi Ukwankoso, he was there at the beginning. He had made invaluable contribution to the development and growth of PDP. You can say that indeed to all other leaders that are coming back. Now, in life, a situation could arise where even in a family, there could be family quarrels, little squabbles here and there, that may make a member of the family, even sometimes significant members of the family, to say, well, if this is the decision that my family is taking, I'm leaving, probably in anger. And then you go. And then as you move on, you realize that, look, family is family. There's no substitute for family. And you said, come on, let me go back home. Are you telling me that if you go and knock at their family house, that they will say you're not coming in? That is the situation that is happening in PDP. These are people that have been well-respected leaders in PDP. We appreciate them. They are well misunderstanding as a result of how certain interests, which then were diametrically opposed to each other, were handled by the party. And so they felt aggrieved. And they have the legitimate right to be aggrieved. And they left. Whether that was a good decision at the time or not is something else. But they left. And they went where they thought they could have a home, away from home. And they discovered that there is no substitute for family. And they never had home there. In spite of the tremendous contribution they made to the growth of that home. It was not a home, it was a house. So they had to leave that house to come back home. And so we believe that these are leaders of PDP. These are people that can add value. These are people that have added value to what PDP had done before. And so let them come back home. And that was why the present leadership of PDP said, let us even liberalize the ground. There used to be a provision in our constitution that when you are coming into PDP or when you leave and come back, you must stay for two years before you will aspire to get into any office. office We've yes. removed that. We've removed that to say, if you are one of those that had left and are coming back, you can come today and from this moment begin to aspire to contest for any office. Because we know that the more the merrier. And now let me come to the last aspect of your question. There are a lot of people outside there who are thinking that because of the eminence of the people that are aspiring in PDP, that there's likely going to be trouble. But we are going to shame them. We are going to shame them because all of us, Beyond the fact that every one of the people that are aspiring to are eminently qualified to become Nigerian president and even do it 100 times better than what the present APC government is doing, we seem to understand ourselves. And that understanding is born out of the fact that today we know that it is not about us. Today we know that it is not even about our political party, the PDP. It is about Nigeria. And because it is the future of Nigeria that is at stake, because Nigerians believe today more than ever that it is only PDP that can save the situation. Because other political parties in the opposition have come to the inevitable realization that to be able 
to bring back Nigeria on course, you need a flagship. And they've identified PDP as that flagship of the opposition to lead the crusade to rescue Nigeria. We as leaders will not afford to create problems for the party and for this strong coalition. I personally had gone to see each and every one of our aspirants, and I've spoken to them. It's not about us. Let us not miss the picture. Let us not miss the ball. Because if we do that, then the confidence that Nigerians have once again invested in us and is investing in our party will be, will be misplaced. And we will not want that to happen. So I want to assure you, as indeed I'm assuring all Nigerians, that today we've learned our lessons in a very hard way. And we've learned these lessons in such a way and manner that we will be the least class of persons that will have that kind of problem to happen. We've agreed because power comes from God. And with that realization, we have resolved all of us, those of us that were there and those that are coming in, that it's only one person that can fly the ticket yeah, of sure. GDP. And whomsoever that God gives, we've agreed that we'll line up behind him, we'll support him because it's not going to be about him. It's not even going to be about us or about our party. It's going to be about Nigeria. And this time around, Nigerians are resolved. Nigerians are resolved that it has to be PDP. And so we will surprise those people who are waiting in the wings for crisis to happen, for them once again to make a gain from aid. That certainly this time around, PDP will handle all these aspirations in such a way and manner as to carry everybody along. There certainly will not be a crisis from it. One of the things that has been an obstacle, let me put it that way, yes. that has been uh, up that the party is facing, mm. or more, many of the principal uh, members of the party, is this issue of corruption. Yes. Um, you're a lawyer yes. and uh, a senior advocate at that. Yes. Um, many of your members are in court. Yes. A few of them have had their cases decided, some yeah. in favor, some against. But uh, this is whole issue of corruption. Is the PDP against corruption? And then secondly, how do you hope to do things in such a way as to change the perception that the party and its members are corrupt? Because they are, that seems to be one of the things that is added to the label of PDP, the issue of corruption. Because every day we hear stories about this amount of money was shared, this one came from here, it was used for election, <laughs> and so on. All that went on. So, and you can't deny that you know that this can be damaging. Especially. You see, one thing we need to understand, talking very responsibly, is that hardly will you have a system that will eliminate corruption 100%, even in developed democracies. Now, for a developing country, I concede that there could be gaps in the system. And I know that some unscrupulous persons, when they get opportunity to serve, they take advantage of these flaws in the system to either manipulate the system to their advantage or to enrich themselves in an improper manner. Now, it was PDP who sat down and said, we must do something about these acts of corruption, state corruption, and perhaps even in the private sector. And then PDP came out to create, build, and strengthen critical institutions for war against corruption. The EFCC was our own creation. The ICPC was our own creation. And we were able also to strengthen other existing institutions, like Nigerian Police Force, like NDLE, and others. And it was under PDP also that the Administration of Criminal Justice Act was also promulgated. All this were done in such a way and manner to ensure that corruption is properly fought, whether within the public service or within the private sector. Now, what did PDP do at that time? If we decided to investigate people in the opposition, we would have been accused of trying to stifle opposition, trying to overwhelm them trying to watch on them. We said, OK, let us begin at home, because charity begins at home. And so what we were doing then was to start investigating PDP leaders. Who you had mean the position. PDP itself? The PDP itself was investigating PDP leaders. 
who have held positions against whom allegations of improprieties were made. And that was what we were doing. And some of these people were saying, no, we are members of the party. <laughs> are members are of government, us? yeah. And we said, no, it doesn't matter. Even if you are members of the party, there are allegations of wrongdoings against you. Yes, we'll give you benefit of doubt, but you will have to be investigated. And that was what happened. And it is on record today that the only two veritable convictions, the only two veritable convictions indeed that were gotten by EFCC were those cases that were initiated by the PDP federal government, the Inyami and, and the Dariye conviction. 